Hey guys, so today is Sunday, the 12th of August, and uh, I don't know what time it is right now. It's probably like around 1.30. I really just wanted to get out the house and needed to be out. I just want to have another real moment with you guys. So it's been really rough for these past couple weeks. As the days go on, it seems like things only get harder and harder for me. I um, don't have a particular format of how I want to really go about with this video, but I always want to make sure that since I am vlogging my journey on this channel, I don't want to just have specific days where I just speak on specific topics. I want to be able to tell you guys in that moment what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. So I, I didn't realize um, my own emotions. It's a funny thing. I usually really do know what I feel like I, I can usually identify whether I'm feeling depressed or if I'm feeling anxious and I've dealt with mental health issues in the past before and so I can identify these things I also take in a lot of emotions I can be very sensitive to a lot of things however a friend of mine the other day I was talking to my friends and he's like are you depressed because your energy has been so low and you just seem kind of distant lately and I know you're going through stuff and I was just like I don't think I'm depressed I mean I'm going through stress I'm going through a lot it wasn't until probably I would say maybe yesterday or the day before yesterday I think it was where I really realized and it hit me like oh crap I think I kind of am borderline depressed Things have not been looking too well when it comes to my relationship. So my spouse is a believer. He's a devout Christian. He takes the Bible quite literally. I've been going through certain things when it comes to that. It's not easy at all. I think that the problem is that it's not just my journey out of religion. It's that with it, it's that piled up on top of other things right now I'm nearing the anniversary of some things that I went through last summer um, in my relationship that that just it, it came so close to breaking my relationship and I was at kind of a high peak last summer last summer I was in better physical shape I was in better emotional and spiritual shape and I was still going through stuff because that was actually when I really really started to embrace coming out of religion and I was going through things in my marriage still but I also was dealing with toxic people in my life and I was not at a place mentally where I am today I'm stronger mentally than I was last summer but last summer I kind of finally reached a peak where I realized the woman that I am and the strength that I have and then a bomb hit me and entered my life. I was never a perfect person and my marriage was always kind of really rocky. And so I am nearing the day and the time frame. So that alone has, I think, caused me to go into a bit of a depression. It's not just my, my coming out of religion. And, and none of this has anything to even do with the ICOC, honestly. I feel like I look at it like this, like I realize this. I kind of went through two journeys. My first journey was leaving the ICOC and dealing with the effects that I had to deal with of leaving, of uh, being basically excommunicated from that community of people that I trusted and believed in and people that I, I shared so much of my personal self with. and. And the, the things that, that was said to me when I left and how it made me feel and realizing it wasn't just what was said to me when I left but also things that went on the entire course of the time I was a part of that church for the seven years I was a part of the ICOC which for those of you who don't know is the International Churches of Christ the cult that I was a part of it's a Christian non, non-denominational church um, that was my first journey and then I was able to heal through it. Like I don't 
I don't feel like I am affected by what I went through in the ICOC anymore. I'm not saying that I've completely gotten over it because I always tell people you don't actually get over being a part of a cult. You just get through it and you overcome it. But you never forget it. So there are times where I'm triggered and there are times where I do have my reminders of it, of course. But that that's a journey I can say for the most part. I'm like, I'm good with that. But then I went through a new journey, which was leaving religion. And that is what makes things even more difficult, is this new journey is really hard. It was one thing to just leave a church, but then to leave the entire religion, it's not easy because then now you're, you're looked at a certain way and you see things so different and you're facing the truths of things that you never knew even existed, truths that you never thought of. You're asking questions that you was afraid to ask before or even questions that you never realized because of your cognitive dissonance not allowing you to really face these things. And so that's what I'm going through now. So now I am agnostic. A lot of people think I'm atheist. I'm not an atheist. I believe that something is out there, but uh, definitely not the God of the Bible. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I'm just recapping for those who are new to this channel right now. But I have been going through, I think, some bouts of depression. And it, when it comes to my relationship, I just don't know how to be true to myself and hold on to what I have at the same time. I feel almost like the boat is not sturdy enough to hold both at the same time. It kind of feels like the ship, I'm trying to keep it from sinking, but like it's gonna sink at some point, like it just can't float. And because of the fact that I am on this new journey that is not approved of by many people, many people. I don't really care, first of all, who on the outside doesn't like what I do. I don't care who on YouTube doesn't like what I do, what people say in the comment sections about me, because I don't wake up to them in the morning. I don't go to sleep with them at night. But when you're married to someone who doesn't approve and you're married to someone who is totally against everything and they can only look through the lens of religion, Every conversation we have, everything we do, every outing, whatever it is, there's always a, a lens to look through, a religious lens. And then me, I look through the secular lens. I look through the lens of, I feel like I see things in different angles. But I'm married to someone who, of course, understandably so, he's a devout Christian. He looks only through the lens of a Christian. Finding that even ground is not easy. I thought it would be a little easier because of the fact that I said I'm gonna be flexible and I'm gonna I'm gonna respect that this is this is how he feels. He needs his time to let it absorb, to let it marinate. He needs time to adjust to this new wife that he has, but it's not very easy because it's there's so many other issues on top of this. This is not the only issue. I just feel like how can I how can I get it across to him how can I make you understand that this is me now this is me and this is not Satan doing this to me this is not me falling into the world this is not me just trying to ride the waves like everyone else because it's cool to be agnostic who the hell wants to freaking be uh, agnostic and for other people to see that and to feel like oh it's cool it's not you know what I'm saying like it's not something that just anyone is gonna want to do when you know that you're not gonna be accepted by so many people like it's not an easy thing so basically I have been trying to find a way to be able to just just cope like I'm trying to, I feel like I have so many stressors in my life and I just need to relax and I need to breathe easy and I'm so thankful that I have you guys because I have been having some really nice messages from some of you guys that have been so supportive and so loving and it helps because truthfully you guys are the only friends that I have to understand 
to understand what I'm going through and are there. And even if you're still a Christian, I do have friends on here who are Christian. And you guys, I consider you my friends. You guys, even though I've never met any of you yet, I would love to meet you guys one day. You get my journey. And even if you don't agree with everything I say or everything I feel, you accept and you're like, you know what? you're loving and that is something that I'm seeing not too many people can do especially people in religion are not as loving as their Bible tells them they should be so uh, trying to think what else um, I'm just trying to see how I can get my feelings out there I've been like doing a lot of writing just journaling and that helps me because you guys know I love to write writing is my life like when I write I feel like everything comes to life for me like everything comes to life writing is my my biggest number one passion and it always has been making content is a huge huge passion of mine so doing this right here helps me a lot and being outside in some nature even though the weather is like kind of sucky lately here in New York because we've been having a lot of humidity and on and off rain is really annoying but it really does help me because this is a lonely journey like this is a very 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 lonely journey I didn't choose to feel this way I didn't choose to become an agnostic my mind just kind of took me there and my heart just kind of took me there and I never expected this to happen. A lot of people get this misconception thinking, well, it's because she left ICOC. The ICOC did not make me an agnostic. That was something I had healed from. It was questions and maybe I can say the ICOC helped lead me but the ICOC is not the reason. A lot of people make comments saying, oh, I'm going to pray for you. You know, I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm sorry that religion hurt you so bad, but you know, God is always there. It's not because I was hurt by religion. Honestly, it's the crazy part. Like people think I'm agnostic because religion hurt me. Religion did not hurt me. The ICOC hurt me and their theology hurt me. Yes, God, I see God is separate from religion, but God did not hurt me. The idea of God of what I would think God would be even though I don't refer to God as God because I don't believe that there honestly is like a God God per se but some sort of higher power but anyway what actually bothers me is seeing religion hurt other people that is what bothers me seeing how religion hurts and divides is what helped me become agnostic because it I started questioning things. I started to realize things that I never paid attention to, like things I've always justified. I started to say, like, wait a minute, but this doesn't even make sense. Like, why? You know, all these different things. And I know I'm going to get people telling me scriptures and saying pray and blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I don't want to hear it right now, guys. I'm just, like, not in the mood for any of those type of comments. You're free to comment, but I'm probably not even going to respond because I'm just not in that type of mood right now. I just I'm fine with being married to someone who is who is a, a Christian I respect all beliefs I have Muslim friends I have Jewish friends I have so many different type of believing friends Catholics I don't care I do not base my friendships or my relationships on what the person believes in because that's their business not mine what happens in the afterlife if there is one what happens with them is not none of my business. It's not my business whether they go to a heaven or a hell or they become a speck of dust. I do not care. I'm all about living in the now, so I do not judge people for what they believe or what they do not believe. I only judge people for the character they show. And since I have come out as agnostic on this channel, I've seen a lot of true characters of people that call themselves Christians, and it's really, really freaking sad to see how separated everyone feels they have to be it's like you've got the religious group and then and there you have the subcategories you've got the Jewish you've got the Mormons you've got the JW's you've got the Christians and then over here you've got the non-religious you've got the agnostics you've got the spirituals you've got the atheists and everyone's like talking all this crap about each other and judging each other 
but at the end of the day, we believe the same in all people. And you can have a Christian in this group over here, and that person could be a real douchebag, and that person could be so messed up and have the worst intentions. And then you can have an atheist over here, a person who doesn't believe in anything at all. No higher power, no type of God, nothing. And they could be the most best, beautiful, loving person in the world. Um, and it's sad that we can't just all bring it on and then come together. But you know what? I cannot be the peacemaker for the world. I'm one person. I can try my best. And my mission in this life has been definitely to try and bring as much peace as I can so that people can create a community where they could be like, you believe in what you believe in. You don't believe in what I believe in. I believe in what you don't believe in. But who gives a crap? We're all people. We're good to go. And there are always going to be those people who are going to see you as different because you don't believe in what they believe. And so i that's the reason why I feel like since I've left religion, I feel I've become much more open-minded and more loving in that sense. I don't see people as based on what they believe. I see people for who they are and for the character that they show. When it comes to my relationship, I don't want to say too much about it because I am actually doing a series I've been paying a lot of attention to you guys in the comment section and questions and uh, emails that you guys have been sending me and things like that which I, I still have some emails I gotta get back to so if I haven't yet please I apologize um, I definitely will but I've been paying attention to what you guys have been asking me and saying and I am doing a very nice long series on interfaith marriage and um, Hopefully that helps a lot of you guys, but in one of the, one of the, what would you call it, videos for that series, because like different videos, I'm going to speak more about what I'm going through in my marriage, so I don't want to spill it all right now. In this one video, I just wanted to use this video to just say how I've been feeling when it comes to um, where I've been lately. I'm not like I said before like I'm just I'm not really feeling very good but at the same time I've been here I've been here before I may not have been in this same particular situation but I've been in this feeling of feeling helpless and hopeless and feeling like I just don't know what to do and feeling like I'm coming this freaking close to giving up on everything altogether and I don't mean everything I mean like the things that are holding me down I feel are holding me captive like I'm coming very close to letting go but I know I'm not gonna let go and um, I, I know I'm stronger than a lot of people may think, and I'm definitely stronger than I think I am, but I realize that as me being the woman I am today, like last year or even compared to the year before that, I was a type that once I was in the depression, that was it. I was in my depression. I felt like I could not go forward. I felt like I don't know what to do. I'm just not strong enough. And... That's the difference between who I am now, is I know that I can get through this. I know I'm going to get through it. Whether I'm still in the same relationship when I get through it or not, I leave that up to the universe or whoever. I'm letting it flow through. This is a true test for myself of being me. This is a true test, uh, a true test of how long can I withstand this being myself and following my heart and my intuition and going with who I truly feel that I am inside versus who I'm told I should be? Am I going to fake it and pretend just to hold on to people in my life or am I going to continue this route? I know that um, with my husband particularly, because he is a Christian, he doesn't believe in following your intuition and your heart so much. He believes that it can lead you astray. Maybe it can, uh, but I feel like, you know what, we never know. We never know anyway, so whether it's going to lead us astray or it's not going to lead us astray, the unknown is scary to anyone. We just don't know, but I know that one thing is for sure is I am staying true to myself, something that I've always had an issue with for the longest of time was staying true to myself. I have got to stay true, my, true to myself. Um, another thing too is I'm realizing so many things, which I need to journal this stuff out, which I'm about to. I have like all my journals in my book bag right now. So after I'm done with this video, I'm gonna be journaling. Uh, I am not broken. 
I'm not broken. Maybe you feel you're broken, but I'm not broken. And I'm getting kind of tired of people, particularly Christians, using that term. I think there's a huge issue when we when we say to ourselves and to others, you're broken, you're lost, you need to be saved. These key words hurt people, hurt many people. And the reason I say that it hurts people is because it, it's hurt me. I have felt broken probably pretty much my entire life. When I was younger, um, I had from very young, I'm talking about like elementary school young, I dealt with this feeling of not being enough and feeling like I shouldn't have been here, I wasn't meant to be here. So basically um, the way that that backstory goes is my dad was uh, in a relationship when he met my mom and I was born, that's all I'll say for now. I was not, I would always say, well, I was not meant to be born. So there was a lot of issues with that. My mom held on to a lot of guilt with that. And, and she didn't make me feel like I wasn't enough, but I always would tell myself, you know, my mom wouldn't be going through all these things if I wasn't born, it's my fault. I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here. And then going to church and always hearing that I'm broken, I need to be saved, I need to be fixed, I honestly believed it. And then going into the ICOC, when I was 23 years old, married with two kids, then I definitely learned a lot about brokenness and needing fixing. Because they're very big on fixing whatever is not even actually broken. There could be a crack, there could be a, a missing piece, but brokenness, that's a big thing. And so I realized like, I do like this little self psychology thing on myself. I mean, I went to school for psychology too, but I'm, I have like a certain kind of insight on things like this. So I start to kind of analyze these things with myself and I realize that I, I don't want to use the word struggle because I hate that word. I deal with, uh, struggle is a trigger word for me, but I deal with feeling um, like I need to be fixed, even though I don't really think I need to be fixed. I deal with feeling like I don't deserve certain things or feeling like this is my fault. I tend to put my emotions out there so much and I take up everyone's emotions so much and I feel guilt so much that I kind of forget about myself and then that could lead into me feeling depressed and then from there I won't take care of myself physically, emotionally, or uh, spiritually, mentally. And so now that's what I want to get back into doing. I want to get back into working out. I want to get back into eating better. I want to get back into being out in nature because summer is going to end and I won't be able to be out here so much anymore because winter here is like almost the whole entire year through. I'm sorry I keep scratching guys. I have mosquitoes, mosquito bites from all last night. But anyway, it feels really good to be doing this video right now. I think brokenness is a topic I do want to save for another video because there's a lot I could say about that. But that is definitely a word that has been bothering me. Um, I was told just the other day that I am broken and that I basically need to be fixed. And I cannot be fixed if, if I don't allow God into my heart and into my life and all this stuff. So yeah, I just want to bring that up. I think that if I can say that I'm broken, then every single person in this world is broken. Because you know what? Just because you're going through one thing in your life doesn't mean that you are broken and need to be fixed. I think I was way more broken when I was a part of religion than I am now. And I'm not talking about the ICOC, I'm talking about even before that. We are always going to go through crap. We're always going to have stuff that we're going to be going through and we are never going to be 100% right. So to honestly believe that every time you go through something that means you need fixing and to feel like you're not worthy of something or feel like you're not deserving of a certain kind of life or happiness or whatever it is, like you don't deserve it. This is negative self-talk we're putting into our mind. Like we're basically flooding our brains with negativity 
all the way from young with the indoctrination and so that's a video that I'm going to uh, make note of in my one of my notebooks and talk about because I think that that's something that a lot of you guys are dealing with too since I've been getting a lot of feedback from you guys and a lot of you guys have been sending me messages and hitting me up and you guys sound like you feel like you're broken and I think a lot of it is from what we're told in church I'm talking about in any church and the songs they sing in church and the worship that they do in church so I think that's pretty much it for now I have like a couple weeks off before I get back to work so I'm gonna use this time to bring myself back up together and uh, I'm gonna be doing a really good series which I'm so excited about and I'm also working on some courses that I will be making and selling and so now I have like this time off that I can do those things finally because working a full-time job and having YouTube and trying to do all this like side stuff on the side is a lot of work but this is my passion this is what I want to do and so I'm looking forward to all of that cool stuff thank you so much guys I love you so much I appreciate the love I appreciate the support and um, I will definitely be seeing you soon enjoy your day we're waiting so long